Hello, and welcome to another Block Chat with Denis Petrovicic and Makram Hani. Today, guys, we'll be displaying to you one of the properties that are coming online over the coming few days. We'll be updating you on what have happened over the past week or two. At the same time, we'll be talking about exciting things that are coming. Stay tuned. There's many interesting stuff that are coming today and some of which are also important for you to be able to um, subscribe to the future of what real estate as an asset class is. Dennis, how are you? Um, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> how about you? Very good. Okay. Amazing. Good. Amazing. All right. That's great to hear. Um, so, yeah, we have, we have some interesting uh, stuff we're going to discuss today. Um, uh, especially the you know just just this week we've launched um, the second property on Ocean Point uh, on the marketplace um, that's eligible for also for staking on on Ocean Point as an app um, and I think after the parking space which were more of a a, con a tribute let's say to early stage supporters um, and that's why we chose it to be the first property um although we've tokenized what 70 properties now and we have more than 60 million worth of real estate um represented in tokens as well or with the potential to be represented fully with tokens um so tokenized um yeah i think this is kind of an exciting new step um it brings new dynamics to to the ecosystem to the tokenomics of uh, of blocks per uh blocks or token in general um, and I'm really excited to see what, what's going to come, uh, with this, um, is this the, the driver, um, for the adoption of tokenized real estate or, uh, within DeFi within web three. Um, yeah, I believe the whole community is excited. Everyone's excited. Even people who are not part, not part of the community. So when we're meeting, uh, people who are interested to launch marketplaces, people who are interested to, um, understand better what we do, because many people see what we do, they go through the docs, uh, and they want better understanding. And our team is open to, 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 um, have those meetings and facilitate that understanding. Everyone is excited about what's coming, um, in the properties that are being offered or that will be offered. Um, the thing, one thing interesting, Dennis, I've noticed this morning, when you look at the parking space today, mm -hmm. you will see that there's only 13 um, owners who are not staking currently. So from all the owners of the 100,000 tokens of the parking space, there's mm -hmm. only 13 non-staking. Uh, and that's amazing. Now, we hope that those 13 also stake. So I hope to see at the end of the day, one as the holder of, uh, of uh, one holder. Uh, why? Because when, when, when you stake, you get an additional benefit. And when you get that additional benefit, it, uh, it, it motivates you, uh, more because it means it's working for you and it needs to work for you on a small scale for it to work for you on a big scale. Today, the property that that um, which which we will not keep you waiting, we'll we'll show you this property and then we'll explain to you about more about this property. The property that we're putting on board is now we're talking a commercial property. Now we're talking a property which which uh, uh, does have significant uh, 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 returns. So we're we're now going into not any more testing grounds. We're going into uh, people investing grounds. And uh, and this is an opportunity for everyone who wants to first own a property in Europe or a piece of it with a fraction of the usual cost and uh, get the benefit still of subscribing to the future and staking those tokens. So there's plenty of benefits attached to that. How about running through it, Dennis? What do you think? Yeah, let's let's uh, let's run through it. But essentially, okay. So now we're in front of the. Let me, let me remove it. Let me remove it. Essentially, what? But essentially, yeah. What what you're saying is is true. Is now we're 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 talking about thinking of, you know, looking at a property not from from a perspective. Oh, this is a nice, cool use case. MVP. This is this parking space, etc. But um, it's for our community to actually 
start touching or accessing, um, giving access to investments that we've made in the past. And, and here, one thing I'd like to emphasize is a lot of times when you, when you look at online investments in real estate, we're talking not about hard assets that, uh, but we're talking about some kind of interest in an asset. Um, here, what we're talking about is um, true economic rights deriving from ownership of that asset directly. So there's those layers that we mentioned with REITs, et cetera, they're not there. It's basically just as being directly involved in that real estate asset, but just in a, in a, in a bit different form, but you are exactly investing there. Let and me translate this to how it matters to an individual. Yeah. Yeah. It's more efficient. There's no cost layers. One, two, you specify, you decide, do I want to invest in this asset or not? One, do I want to sell my interest in this asset? I sell it. I'm not part of a pot of assets and my money is diversified or di or diverted into plenty of the assets. In other and, words, and, and here and here, if I may ask, some a lot of times the word diversification is used instead of um, reallocation based on the manager's requirements, not the investor's requirements. Because a lot of okay. times when you have a pot of assets and there's managers who make important decisions on your behalf as an investor that doesn't mean that that those decisions are um good for the investor in the end they might be good for the fund overall because that's the purpose of those uh, decisions here nobody's deciding whether you want to exit from that property for you you decide you want to enter you decide when you want to exit um and and you're not giving money to somebody else and that uh, that other person is managing it for you. There's no management of that money there. It's just a, a transaction, a transaction of rights from person A to person B. That's it. And it's as passive as can be. So while we're saying this, guys, we we um, we need to uh, talk about yeah. There is always when you're when you're depending on someone managing a property the right way and then because it's a key element in real estate, that key component in it, there is a an element of risk there. So there's no investment whatsoever, ours uh, with 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 the uh, with the uh, ocean point or with any other with a REIT that is risk free. Each has its challenges and each has its possibilities of caveats. However, if you look at the details, risk is a result of ignorance. If you know more, risk will be less. So you'll be doing a move if you are in the car business that to me would be would look super, superbly risky and I wouldn't want to do. To you, it's a part of your um, circle of competence. Thus, you can do it and you see that the risk is mitigated well enough for you to do it healthily and sustainably. And this is very important. So uh, make sure that whatever you look at, and um, have your own due diligence on um, look into look into the details because the devil lies into the detail in the details and um, understand your investment and your move in a right way and see if that works for you and for your family and for your wealth accumulation and generation in the future. Let's run through the asset. Yeah. Um, I am specifically excited about this asset for a few reasons. Uh, I let Dennis. Um, Talk to us more about the asset because obviously he knows this asset much more than I will know it. And then we will um, we'll talk about a few things that I'm very excited about when it comes to this asset. Let's run. Okay. So uh, we start at all times by the main page of the marketplace. We log in, we reach this page. Now, I didn't connect my, my wallet yet. However, you can collect, connect your wallet and get there. What we will do is we will go to the marketplace. And when we reach the marketplace, we obviously can see all the assets that have been tokenized to date with some lag because there's always assets that are in the pipeline, probably the tokenization instance that happened. However, they're not here yet. And we go down and we see here, by the way, this is the parking place that we're talking about. Remember, I said that there's only 14 holders, current holders, 14 which means there's 13 people on staking because everyone who's staking goes under one contract, thus under one holder. Now, 
Um, we go back on this and then we reach the, uh, the marketplace again and we reach the asset that we are talking about. Uh, Dennis, can you tell us more about this asset, please? And yeah, what does this sure. asset, what does it have and, and why is it an interesting asset? Um, so uh, for those who've been following us, uh, they have might have heard uh, of some real estate investments that I've made in the past. Um, and they might know that I've invested, I've chose as my niche, uh, target niche uh, as an investment uh, in, in real estate in Ljubljana, student accommodation. Um, the simple reason for this is that Ljubljana is a university city. It has more than 40,000 students every year um, studying here. Some come from different parts of Slovenia and there's uh, a, a growing portion of foreign st students as well. You have um, people from uh, Serbia, Croatia, Macedonia um, uh, coming, so from ex Yugoslavia coming to study to uh, Ljubljana. Um, and these students, they always are looking for places to stay. Um, however, there's a campus in, in Ljubljana, but that campus is a bit outdated and no new real new campuses are going to be built in the foreseeable future um, when interest rates were low there were projects on the table we were talking about 20 30 million uh, projects uh, development projects for uh, a new area for student housing uh, but that didn't happen and now with inc with increased interest rates it's even less likely uh, for it to start and even if it started it's a project that is three to five years down the road uh, so by analy analyzing that kind of landscape, um, I saw there's a big shortage of supply in student accommodation in the city. And on the other side, there's a big supply of, or large enough supply of, uh, of you know, uh, these larger houses, houses of 300 square meters to 500 square meters that, um, two generations ago were built uh, in the prospect of younger generations just living under the same roof with their you know, parents, etc. But this kind of didn't unfold in this way because younger generations, they tend to, to go and buy apartments and live in apartments rather than staying in, in a house. So the square meters price when you purchase an asset like this, it's much, much closer um, to give you a profitable investment. So on the other side, apartments today are selling from in a range from four to 10 K per square meter, which is, uh, you know, obviously it's a totally different price range that than the assets we have here on the other, uh, on the other side, you so also Dennis, have, yeah. Dennis, what are we talking about per square meter on this asset? So per square meter, so um, the asset was purchased in 2019 mm -hmm. um, and there was a total investment of 750,000 euros um, mm -hmm. in the purchase and renovation of the asset. Okay. And the asset is making um, uh, gross revenues of so the projection for next year is uh, 122K. Okay. Um, which I think it's, it's, it's a good, <laughs> it's a good cash flowing asset. And that's gross. Yeah. Gross. Yes. So right. if, if we look at, uh, at, um, at after costs, after taxes, etc., it's still a good yield. Uh, it's a it's a good yield that uh, that the asset is producing. Um, it has as well a mortgage. It's uh, so so a, a big part of the cash flow goes to to pay the mortgage. But there's enough cash flow for us to be able to tokenize and offer. Um, I think up to twenty five percent of tokens. Right now, it's tokenized ten percent, and that supply uh, is offered on the marketplace. <clears throat> And if there's enough demand for it, maybe it's going to be increased. Um, that's to be seen. 
And and uh, how many square square meters is it? It's all in all, it's uh, something below 500 square meters. Um, it's okay. in four floors, um, so, so it's way it. below the market average of 4,000 to 10,000 yes. uh, euros yes. per square meter. Yes. Okay, and and the catch is I I I watch this type of uh, houses every so often. It depends on how much time I have available, um, and um, and um, basically I I kind of try to understand <clears throat> if if uh, if the how the, the, the how the house is composed the rooms etc if it would enable this kind of um, um, uh, this kind of setup for a, a co-living space for students right <clears throat> the return is driven by the utility and the, the setup at the end of the day yeah. a few things here that I'm very excited about in, on this asset one is in general, uh, those assets that are in Ljubljana, which is a university city, and you will notice if you go to Ljubljana, you'll notice that it is a university immediately because you see plenty of students around. Um, and, and, and you see the, the students dominate some of the streets. Um, the beauty of it is that you don't have too much new offering on that. So the supply is not increasing just dramatically. At the same time, uh, you have universities are growing cities generally. Um, and and uh, when you have a city with a young population um, and, and you have a university there, it's very difficult to create a new supply around the university. Yeah, And supply away from the university is not as valuable, does not make as much sense as supply beside and around the university yeah so this is why it's very important to understand that the second thing i know for a fact that this uh, for a fact that dennis have told me before that most of the time it's booked for the year that's coming yeah. the year before and this is very important it means you have that kind of demand and that means that you can to a certain limit decide your pricing uh healthily and you're not squeezed into just uh, raising the occupancy because you don't have enough occupants. And that also was through COVID, I believe, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I, I was a bit uh, skeptical to see how, how this will all unfold when COVID came. Um, but but all contracts went through. Maybe some, some people requi requested to cancel the contract, obviously, and because the contract is a yearly contract um, uh, divided into 12 monthly uh, installments, um, it, those contracts, the lease contracts can also be paid in, in full with a small discount of 5% for the tenant. So um, I would say we had to extend the period of repayment for, uh, for maybe two tenants. Um, and um, and that's it but most most uh, was went through smoothly without any any real losses um, and the reason for it is that um, especially foreign students in COVID times they they had to they couldn't move around so, I mean they they had to have this kind of space so for them it was even more important while for the civilian students obviously it was a bit less because they had the ability to maybe travel home um, and stay with their parents but all in all um, I think here in this particular real estate property, we have uh, rooms for 32 tenants. Um, it's fully occupied. Um, there's a change on a yearly basis of, on average, 25, 30% of students um, uh, exit and new come in. Um, and there's a whole process that obviously I, I kind of, Put in place on how these bookings happen so what we do is we we already get um the first inquiries in february march uh for this the next year um then uh, uh, some google advertising happens then we get uh, people into the the priority list uh where they already make some down payment for the next year then they they come and see the place they confirm it and then in july the contracts for the following year are being signed when the actual availability, um, so the exclusivity to prolong for another year for existing students is kind of terminated. So this kind of flow ensures that tenancy 
is <clears throat> as much efficiently um, um, fully occupied as possible. Obviously, you know, you can't predict the future and there might be a situation where due to um, economic downturn, due to a uh, situation uh, on the market, there's less people that can afford it. However, I think real estate in the end comes down to location. And when I choose this type of, of houses, what I do is I really look that it's near to a core university, um, a, a core uh, faculty, sorry. So this means that here, for instance, this house is really very close. It's like five minute walk from, from the university, uh, well, the faculty of sports sciences. But then it's a 10 and 15 minute walk from the faculty of law, um, the, the medicine and, um, and, and administration. So altogether, we have, I think, something like 17,000 students around in a radius of 15 minutes. And I think so enough, is, demand, enough, dem <laughs> enough demand to, <laughs> to enough demand cover what to, we to need supply here, yeah. 32, you know, basically to cover the, the supply of 32. Um, and now, a few things here, guys, that you can yeah. see on the on the marketplace. One, <laughs> you can see the address of this property. Obviously, then this allows you to follow that property and check it out on chain. At the same time, you have the uh, value, current value of the property, valuation in die, uh, current holder because it's not sold yet, uh, and how much is tokenized so here when it says 10000 bspt for everyone who knows and doesn't knows or should know that we split every property to 100000 bspt so 100000 tokens and bspt is block square property token um here we have 10000 uh, tokens available it means we've tokenized 10% of this property you can see on the other side here the apy and much more details will be populated within the coming few days uh, on, on this page so that you can see uh, many more details. Let me show you the type of details that you will be expecting to see over here. We'll go again to the parking place and uh, uh, run you through what you would be expected to see. First, a description. Second, ownership structure. Third, investment overview and other information if there's any other information provided and and the information here is very valuable at the same time you can see the uh, location you can see um you can go to view the corporate resolution by the way and all documentation is immutable on chain remember that this documentation is immutable and on chain including the details of valuation including the details of the corporate resolution including every single detail that we furnish you with over here. Um, anything else, Dennis, that you would like to say about the here, asset? Here on top, um, on, on top above the property info card, you have this five tabs where you can uh, find uh, additional details on each asset. Here's uh, when here's any past trades that happened on chain are recorded here. Um, then the next one is uh, you have the images and the exact location of the asset. So you can, you know, even open it in Google Maps, if you will. There's a section with documents um, where you basically then have um, any documents that were attached and you can view them. This might be um, in uh, uh, like ownership documents and, and, uh, and other stuff. And then the last one, there's an analytics charts part where you can see, for instance, um, the capital stack. If you if you click on initial drop down, um, you can see the and and every change in the capital stack has a time stamped entry on chain, which is then represented here as a chart. Um, so um, so that you can see how it changes throughout um, throughout time. And, and that's, I think, uh, like to, to, to run you through the, the, the marketplace views. Um, I think one, one of the, the things where, if we go back to the student housing part is there's in recent, in the recent five to 10 years, there's a big trend in Airbnb and booking and short-term rentals. Right. And, and if you think of, you know, this, this practice, obviously 
it's it's interesting and it means that a lot of investors have decided to to basically renovate their houses or apartments and purpose them for Airbnb. But those are usually not ideal for for students because they want to stay for a couple of years. So just going exiting in May, just before the, the exam season and then coming back in October, uh, when tourist season is over, end of October, let's say, it's not something that they're searching for. So here they have the ability to really um, stay um, throughout the whole year um, and prolong for basically until the end of their studies. And all those apartments that went into Airbnb, they are supply that goes away from students because they were targeting students before. And then when you invest 20, 30 K into, into Airbnb for the, and you make the calculations on your ROI on Airbnb prices, obviously this doesn't fit together. So a lot of owners are reluctant basically, or hesitant to rent it out to students because the, 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 obviously the furnishing and everything that they invested in will, will maybe deteriorate faster because of constant use, um, throughout, uh, by, and, and it doesn't yield obviously in the same way. If, if you look here, a monthly rent for a student, a single student, how a single student room goes for around 400 euros per month is the cost. Well, Airbnb probably, uh, for, uh, you would on the same square meters, you would rent this in a recoup it in a couple of days so yeah <clears throat> there's pros and cons of every type of asset class obviously when you are connected i always say if you're beside a major hospital and i mean a major hospital or you're beside a major university in general you rarely can go wrong why because those institutions are very good at growing and sustaining long term Remember, in our research, we refer usually to the likes of Harvard, to the like of the likes of Oxford, Cambridge, and then so imagine those um, those institutions um, advocating and and actually not only advocating but expecting and provisioning for the whole world. And uh, how would they provision for themselves? How would they grow their future? Most probably. Uh, they're one of the most successful doing that. So major institutions in every country. And Ljubljana is a European city that is uh, young, uh, liked by many other cities. Where do you have students from uh, in Ljubljana, Dennis? Um, well, besides domestic students from Slovenia, you have a big influence. By, by Slovenia, we mean not only from Ljubljana, from all the peripherals also. Within yeah, Slovenia. yeah, Slovenia is a country, right? So there's uh, there's uh, there's a couple of universities in Slovenia. So you have Ljubljana University, which is the largest. Then you have in Maribor another one in in on the on the coast. And but the thing is that the University of Ljubljana is the oldest one. Um, it has uh, been around for the, more than a century, um, and maybe even longer, honestly, sorry <laughs> uh, for the misinformation, but maybe somebody will probably will, will be correcting me and saying, um, but it's actually quite renowned in terms of the area um, uh, or the ge geolocation here. Um, so a lot of the, 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 the West Balkans, let's say, uh, countries, uh, so ex you're not wrong by the way, it's 1919, so we just crossed the century now. Okay, all right, <laughs> so so I, I was not that wrong. <laughs> I know there was a there, I know there was a big kind of uh, anniversary, but I was like, oh, is it a hundred years or is it more? Maybe, <laughs> um, Perfect. but yeah, so you have students from different countries, uh, from Croatia, Serbia, uh, Macedonia, Montenegro. Um, uh, that's mainly, uh, why do they come to Ljubljana, uh, Dennis? Well, first of all, it's part of the EU. So European union, uh, you, when you get a degree here, um, it's, it's a degree that you can use to get a job anywhere in Europe. Um, and, um, it has really high standards, uh, of education. Um, it's affordable, um, uh, for those who don't know. 
studying in Slovenia uh, is for Slovenians free of charge. Um, so uh, after after high school, you can enroll. Um, there's high higher, uh, let's say, um, they don't accept all students, but there's, you know, uh, yeah. in some in some universities, it's really hard to get, uh, in some faculties, it's really hard to, to get on there. Um, and it's uh, based on your grades uh, that you had before. Um, and there's always some, some availability that's open for foreign students as well. Um, so um, those who are able to enroll, um, they usually don't need to pay. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, and that's also driving driving people to come and study here. Um, so if you look at the 2008, 2009 crisis, and if you start studying a bit on uh, on uh, how many people uh, or how 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 the the educational uh, sector kind of uh, did throughout that period, you're gonna find out that um, a lot of there was an increase in uh, enrollment into study uh, university programs. Um, so, if we say that we are in a in strange times, economic times, um, and that some people may be uh, feeling a bit discouraged of what's gonna be come next, um, I'm actually quite. <clears throat> quite confident that um, the student accommodation part, for instance, is always going to be supported, um, even in an economic downturn. If jobs, now jobs are at the highest levels, I think in most countries in Europe, in Slovenia, there's only 47,000 seekers uh, for a job, which is nothing. <laughs> um, it's it, There's a lot of demand for um, high quality um, staff yeah cool so in other words we have a resilient asset class uh it's a it's an asset that's well managed remember it's very i, I like when uh when we say that the owner tokenized 10 percent only 15 percent. and by the way with time you will not see much of that guys why because owners who want to tokenize usually may want to pull out more cash of it here the interesting thing is that because Dennis purchased this as an investment, uh, yes, he's putting it up for tokenization and sale. The theory behind it, however, is he want to retain that investment. And that tells you that that owner, whoever it is, be it Dennis or anyone else, that owner is, <coughs> sorry, that owner is motivated to manage the property prudently and make sure that it's managed in a, in a good way. And and this secures you, doesn't <coughs> sorry doesn't guarantee you, but secures you to a certain level, um, a high uh, level of return, and a consistent, uh, well uh, managed property. He cares about who enters, who's the student who takes a room, how will he treat it, and 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 that's very important because property management is half of your quality of return in a in a uh, property investment. Uh, that that said, you're also in a in a city that is um, a university. You're also in a city where there is let, little demand and little new demand. So the existing supply, or sorry, little new supply. The existing supply is there. There's little new supply coming up. There was a um, a, a quantity of supply that was supposed to come, but I believe it's on post since some time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because of changes in the economic environment, because changes in the capital markets. Remember, such new projects usually are capital intensive and are not easy to uh, develop and build, uh, especially when you have other challenges in some countries uh, yeah. which are which are beyond beyond that. So it's a cool asset to have for everyone in the in the in the community and everyone who's not in the community. Jump on, guys. Try it on. Um, you are able to. Uh, have access and purchase those tokens for that asset you're able to stake them or you're able to just retain ownership without without staking and benefit from the uh, return that that uh, that asset gets you uh, always remember this is not financial advice we don't advise you financially here we tell you what we're doing and if you would like to do similar to what we're doing feel free to uh, do so there's no investment without risk please do your own due diligence and and uh, i always encourage you not only to do your own due diligence 
um, do much more due diligence that you would do usually buying a microwave, which is the opposite of what people do usually. They research for two days to buy a microwave, research for 15 minutes to do an investment, which is the ultimate mistake. Um, Dennis, is there any other news we would like to uh, tell our community prior to because we've already used the time that's specified for us? No, I think I think we can uh, we can keep this block chat uh, focused on on the property itself, uh, etc. I'm I'm sure that we're gonna uh, organize soon uh, another uh, AMA on Discord, uh, written AMA, uh, maybe this coming week or the week that follows. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's that's it, guys. You have an asset there. Um, it doesn't need you don't need to be an interested party to purchase into that asset to log in create an account get whitelisted if you're not and uh get kyc'd and go ahead and look around understand what it is and uh just check us out uh, and if you see that there's something interesting there feel free to jump on um thank you all for being part of our energy today dennis thank you so much Thank you, Mark. Have a pleasant day. Ciao, ciao.